Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Latin America show. My name is Enrique Gelista, and as every Tuesday, it's a pleasure being to not here with all of you, sharing the best of Latin America and the Latin America people that they are all around the world. But well, tonight we're going to talk about two people that they are based here in the UK, and we have prepared an extraordinary show. If you have watched uh, the promo video that we have, well, we're going to talk about Bolivia, and we're going to talk about an delicious drink that is uh, caleño. And let me just put this in mute because I have to do my, the sound. So first of all, I would like to invite you to follow us in all of our social networks. You can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and, and of course, well, here uh, uh, on YouTube and here, of course, in face on Facebook. If you subscribe to YouTube, don't forget to put the bell every time that so you will know every time that we're uploading a video. And, and of course, well, also you can watch all the previous chapter over there that we have talked about different countries, different traditions, etc. I have a lot of people that they are already connected. And I would like to ask you to share this video, give us a like in order that we can promote more Latin Americans and more people that they are linked with Latin America. It doesn't matter where they're from, but they are linked with Latin America and bring it to the, to the show. And of course, well, support us, more people, they will know what are we doing. If you have a friend, that they are interested in Latin America, invite them to watch the show. I would like to say thank you to Abhijit that is already connected that said, hola, Latin America team. Lili Martinez, who is saying, yeah, llegué primero. Uh, well, unfortunately, Lili, maybe yes, you arrived first, but well, we have, uh, you were the second mes message that I have here. Uh, and well, also here we have uh, Abhijit is saying, Abhijit means winner in, in, in what? In too? What, what, what? I didn't understand that one. Uh, I'm not Latin. I know that you are not Latino, eh, Abhijit, but I said people that they are linked with Latin America. And I know that you are a person that well, that you are a lover of all the Latin American culture. So thank you very much. Also, hello to Jose Miranda, who is here with us, to Diana Carolina Corlado. And I would like to say thank you everyone uh, from Bolivia, from Colombia, who they are connected. We know that while well, they are sharing this broadcast with Centralista San Miguel, that while well, we're going to have an interview with Joshua and, uh, and also we're going to have uh, Ekel, that they are going to tell us a little bit about these ex this extraordinary outstanding dances that they have and also a very famous carnival that they have in Bolivia that while well, you may know. Uh, and also, I think so in a previous show, we have talked a little bit about it. Uh, also, we are going to have Ellie, Ellie Webb, that she is going to present this drink that is like a non-alcoholic spirit. So while you are going to taste, well, we're going to have the opportunity also to taste it because we have some prizes for you and for the audience. So tonight we're going to have two, two uh, well, outstanding prizes that is like one bundle for uh, courtesy of our friends from Caleño as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can try this new spirit that, well, is a, a, well, we will know more about it in, in a couple of minutes. And also some caps courtesy from Centralista San Miguel, London. So while well, they are going to be with us here and while well, you will have the opportunity to win these two, um, these two different prizes, we have five caps and we have one bundle. And as always in the Latin America show, it's going to be very easy. And now we're going to split the quiz in two. One is going to be the quiz for Centralista San Miguel. That is going to be more or less at the middle of the show. And the other one that almost at the end of the show for the bundle for Caleño. And I would like to say hello to mis amigos, Winnie Nuchereno. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening. I'm loving the competitive spirit <laughs> in the comments. That is exactly what we need in the quizzes tonight. So um, stay tuned. And I look forward to teaching you a little bit of Spanish and a little bit of slang. Thank you, Whitney. And on the other side, we have Roger Alarcón. Well, it's been a pleasure being here again with you guys. And I cannot let pass the year, uh, the opportunity just to congratulate these three Latin Americans, Mexicans, we're win, winner. They're the winners of the sound metal. They win at the Oscar. These three Mexicans, Jaime Baxit, Michelle Couton, and Carlos Cortez. They're the Latin Americans who won the last weekend. And when, let's carry on with the program. Excellent, Roger. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you for that update. 
And I think so it's time to go first to some music because we have a very, very good band that they are also from Colombia. And we're actually going to listen to this video that is Oilo, that well, and they are La Mamba Negra. So, well, over you, Royal. Of course, that's an amazing band. You're ready to dance? Because believe me, you will dance.
Yeah, amazing music. And it's like, I don't know why I have like a lot of sound here. Like, I don't know what I'm doing here. But it's like, I think it's here. No, I don't know why I have this mm -hmm. sound that is repeating. Yeah, anyway, so uh, I think it was here. I know where it is. Okay, anyway, so thank you everyone for uh, for watching us. And uh, of course, well, I guess seen a, a lot of people that they are doing it, well, they are saying in the comments that well, they are ready to dance. And of course, enjoying the salsa music and also ready for some spirits and also to enjoy uh, this extraordinary music. But I think so, let me just put this view, yeah, all together. So I think so now it's time to go to with me in the section. Okay, while I set up, I have one quick question. Roger, did you dance with a broom or your fridge or, or your fridge to this song? <laughs> Do you know what, Whitney? This thing, this song is so cool. At the end of the show, I gotta do it. Oh, definitely. You absolutely have to. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, I Nick mean, I, put his I, mean inv I invite too. everyone to do it. <laughs> me too. Me too. Definitely. All right. So we're going to put microphones in mute. Thank you so much. All right. Class has begun. So this evening, I figured um, for the first part of Making Spanish Simple with me, Whitney, um, since one of our guests, and we've mentioned this oh, about 500 times already, <laughs> is going to talk about the non-alcoholic beverages, it got me thinking about some of the beverages I've talked about in the Spanish segments, and a lot of them has to do with wine. So I'm a teacher, you know, you just need a little wine after a long day. So I figured this time, tonight's first half would be dedicated to all age appropriate drinks. So let's begin. And some of this will be review. Okay, we can't talk about Colombia without talking about coffee. It just, and this is a really good review to a very long time ago, I believe, when we last done it. I forget, we've done a lot of shows. So um, again, one of Latin America's bi biggest products, not just Colombia, but all around, as we mentioned in many, many episodes. So let's talk a little bit about el café, which is coffee. So there are a lot of different types, of course, as you know, um, and we're just going to get into some of the basics as a review. You have a, el café solo or café negro, um, which is just like coffee, nothing else. And then you have café con leche. So um, Leche is milk, so a café con leche is a coffee with milk. And um, as we know, in Colombia, there's another way to say um, coffee if you're buying it on the street. Um, and we're going to get into that right now. Un tinto, which is like a café solo or café negro. Um, oh, and by the way, there's a quiz on this, so please pay attention, okay? Um, in Colombia, if you're buying it like on the street from some of the street vendors, kind of like in this picture, uh, you have you might see instead un tinto, which is un café solo or café negro. Um, and solo, it, café solo means like just coffee, café negro, it's dark. So again, it's, it's coffee. So tinto is the way you would say it there. Or you would have un perico. So... Un perico is, um, it's like a tinto, but half of it is milk, okay? So it's another way to say like cafe con leche. So again, just to recap, so it's good to do that. We have el cafe, cafe solo or negro, which is just coffee. Or in Colombia, we would call it un tinto if you buy it on the street. Or you have un cafe con leche or un perico. So that's kind of the difference, okay? And all of this falls under something we need every day to get through the day, la cafeína, okay? So that's just to show you one area of beverages where, where, I don't know about you, definitely need it to start your day. Another thing, if you want to have like a refreshment, is el jugo. Now, when I when I spent a little bit of time in Spain, weirdly, they called it el zumo, but I believe that's just in Spain because I've heard el jugo like everywhere else or with everyone else I was talking to. So you have el jugo and that is juice. So you have el zumo, which you might hear, but more so in Spain. And then of course, el jugo because we're at the Latin America show. So that's the one I want to kind of broadcast a little bit more. And you have like, hay muchísimos jugo de fruta, okay? A lot. And I picked just a couple today, but there are so many more and they're so refreshing. And here are a few of them. Okay, 
el jugo de naranja. So naranja is orange. So el jugo de naranja is orange juice. We have el jugo de manzana. Manzana is apple, so that's apple juice. And then we have el jugo de piña, which is pineapple juice. And remember, the J in Spanish makes an H sound. So el jugo de, okay? Manzana, naranja, and piña, okay? Moving on. Couple other beverages. Again, these aren't all the non-alcoholic beverages, um, but just so I don't throw your brain into overload, here are a few more. So you have el agua. So agua is water, right? Like re regular water. If you were to say agua del grifo, it's like tap water. But if you're ordering out, and in some places, obviously, it's advisable to have like um, spring water because you just don't know how you'll react to it. That's el agua mineral. Now, agua is actually a feminine word. This means that if I were to like put it plural, it'd be las aguas. But why is it el? This is with many, many words. Um, the most common ones I've talked about is agua, ave for bird. Arte for art. Those are just a couple, um, and they're all they're all feminine. But when they're like singular, when it's just one, it's el agua. It's really really weird. But just a little side note on something we've talked about before. So you have el agua mineral, which is still water, okay, from the bottle, and then agua con gas is a way of saying sparkling water. Okay, and then last but not least, you have el te, which is tea. I just decided to throw that one in there last minute. So quick quiz, I'm gonna show you these again very quickly. Jugo de naranja, manzana, de piña, tinto, perico, café solo, el café con leche. So now that we've done a bit of review, this is a warm up for the quizzes you're, gonna, you're going to have, I'm gonna explain. Okay, so in the comments, you're gonna put in one comment, both answers, okay? And the first question is, <laughs> which word do we say, do we use to say juice primarily in Latin America? Zumo o jugo? And then comma, <laughs> and then which coffee, the ones that we talked about in Colombia that you buy like from a street vendor is contains milk. Is it perico or tinto? Put it in the answers below. And during my second segment, my second half, I will talk about who's right, okay? And give you lots and lots of confidence, hopefully, for one of the last quizzes. And that's it for my first half. It's short and simple and sweet. Next half, we're gonna talk about those of you who um, did very well on this mini quiz. And then we're gonna get into just six slang words and really get into them from slang from Bolivia. That's it. That's all I got. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Whitney. And also, well, it's like, well, yeah, I, I can see people that they are answering, Ooh. like Gary, Dan, Tiana, etc. Yes. I'm not going to say any of this because if not, Whitney is going to. You know what? Yeah. I'm going to interrupt. <laughs> Sorry. I know it's really bad. You already did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Diana and Garen. Muy bien. Perfecto. Jugo y perico. Nicely done. That's all. Perfect. Actually, well, Jose <laughs> said that well, Tinto is just black coffee. Yes. And uh, well, uh, thank you for Diana, Victor, who is here, Ellie, that well, she's going to be with us, uh, Jaja, Francine, um, who else we have here. And I would like to say thank you to Andrea Summerskill because, well, we listened to uh, La Mamba Negra and actually, uh, Andrea uh, is the one who passed me the details mm -hmm. of La Mamba Negra, and that's the mm -hmm. reason why we have them here. So thank you very much, Andrea. Uh, uh, and of course, I know that you passed me another name. We are we are considering also to put them. And also, apologies for the delay that when you send me this one of these. But we have a lot of different. Uh, the calendar is quite full for some of the shows that we have. So we were looking like when is the best time that fits that a uh, particular uh, musician or artist to come with us. But thank you very much, Andrea. And I think so that well, is going to go to our first interview. But before we go to the first interview, we have a video just to know about what is Centralista San Miguel. So enjoy, it's amazing, Roger. Oh, 
I think so. And also wow. the combination. I really wow. like the combination or the mix that we have Bolivia in London. So, well, that's really, really cool. So, but well, actually, just to talk more about what is Centralista San Miguel, I'm representing this beautiful country that is Bolivia. We have one, uh, one guest that, well, well we, we have two guests actually. We have uh, Joshua and we have Ekel that they are going to tell us a little bit more about. What is Centralista San Miguel? What is all these dances? What is a, the car, one of the carnivals that is the most famous one in Latin America? So, um, well, I would like to say welcome to uh, Joshua and Ekel. How are you doing, guys? <laughs> Hello, Enrique. How are you? Thank you so much for the invitation. And very happy to stay in your program. You, you promised the best, I think, so to the Latin American TV here in London and in Europe. And congratulations for one biggest program. Finally, you invite Bolivia in the house. Yeah. Well, they were they were here before. Actually, no, hold on, hold on. They were here before, and we were talking a little bit about Bolivia. But you know what? Excellent. Yeah. We we were just waiting for the right time to bring this uh, something outstanding about Bolivia. But actually, we we spoke about Bolivia in a couple of episodes. Well, not a couple, but I think so. Last year, we talked yeah. about Bolivia, and and yeah, actually. We talk about something that you will remind to the audience about the carnival that is very important. But well, it's like we're going to talk about that one later. And actually, I say thank you, uh, Joshua and Echo, because well, also for the audience, we have five caps that well, if you are based oh, in the yeah. UK or in South America, you can be one of the winners of this one. And it's going to be very easy. Joshua is going to ask two questions after he concludes his the interview or the, the talk that we are going to have. Two simple questions. So as you know, in the Latin America show team, we love these quizzes. So you have to answer exactly in the same way as we need trained you before. So in one comment, you have to put the two answers together. And the five participants that they answer, uh, well, the first one that they answer correctly, they are going to be the winners of this, uh, uh, this beautiful caps that uh, Centralista San Miguel, they are like giving to the audience in this time. So guys, of course, it's, it's an honor. Uh, we saw, and I think so, I have comments about the extraordinary outfits and everything. I, I, I have seen many times different dances from Bolivia and it's just, wow. I get impressed about the quality uh, and of course how all the decoration, everything is just, uh, it, it, it's just brilliant. Mm -hmm. And I, I would like to start like, well, asking you, well, it's like, if we're going to talk about centralistas, I would like to talk about the different type of dances of Bolivia. What, what is this dance? Why caporales? And tell us a little bit more about that. What is that? Yeah, yeah the first thing is, uh, it's not 
Eclec, es Elec. Elec, ahí se dice Elec, ¿no? Elec. 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 No, dijiste Elec. Ah, Eclec. Oh, Elec. sorry. Sorry, sorry, Elec. <laughs> Elec. Yeah, yeah, Elec. And actually, it's here, and it's like, oh, Okay, sorry. No problem, no problem. In, in yeah, the, it's fine. Yes, Elec, and yeah, yeah, about the dance, you know, we, we are Bolivian, we are like uh, the world more biggest country in like in, in music and dance traditional. We have a lot, a lot quantity of music and, um, and dance in my country. So it's very difficult choice one where you are a fanatic to the folklore. So when we born the Bolivians, we born dancing something like morenada, diablada, caporales, something like that. It's traditional because uh, I don't know what's happening in my country, but we love the music, we love the dance, and every and every part of the society, you know, the high society, medium society, low society, is the same. Where we're talking about the for, the Bolivian folklore. So each Bolivian que born in my country, yeah, each Bolivian loves something like, and we chose the the caporales because it's so energetic, it's so sexy, it's so beautiful. Where the girls dancing, with the guys, with the powerful. And of course they have a history and they have a like, um, like uh, every dance in my country have a history of where can be, they can be from. So it's so beautiful choice something. And yeah, we chose Caporales and we bring this from La Paz, uh, where they coming from, La Paz original from Los Yungas. It's like the mixer to the Andes and the Amazons is in the medium. And they coming from the Afro-Latino, uh, Afro-Bolivian, uh, community and it have a very nice history Enrique they coming from this community because like you know many people black coming to South America like the slaves and uh, we have in the boats you see in the boats we have uh, these songs like uh, cascabele que mm -hmm. sound like this uh, yeah we these representations the chains. the chains to the slaves in the in the past so uh, as well, they coming from Caporal. Caporal is the like the manager from this. Uh, what this, is the work? They work, they work um, yeah. So it's so the representation this community, this little community in Bolivia. But they started with the Saya, later exchanged to Caporal, and like you see, it's so energetic, it's so beautiful, and I think it's the more popular dance I in the world. Uh, for for the Bolivian um, for my country for Bolivian music because it's so strong it's contagious and beautiful okay. yeah and I have a quick question about like the outfits um, for the men and women like mm -hmm. what do they represent and where do they come from how do they match up with this beautiful history and transformation of this dance especially the women's costumes <laughs> okay and um, so the the two costumes um represent or make the dancer kind of represent two different uh figures or, or characters um so the dancers we, we Joseph just explained it represents um um heritage from um quite a, obviously a sad sad part of the history that was the slave labor on the uh, mines and plantations and part of that, as Joshua was, was explaining, was that one of the workers would be selected and given a slightly privileged position, and he would be called a capataz. And so part of that would be that he would have a uniform which had his, um, boots, um, like quite, quite baggy trousers, a work top, um, and a hat, and also a whip. And his job was to maintain the pace of work and the discipline within the work gang. And he, so that's what the male costume that you can see is kind of based on that that uniform and then with the women um the women's costume or the cholita costume is based on the traditional kind of um costume that, that women uh, of that era would wear but obviously a carnivalized kind of fan fantasy version so this the short the skirt is a lot shorter than it really would have been but the hat is like a typical um bowler hat that the and women wear in the andes so it, it draws, it, it's based on what was worn at the time, but obviously um, developed into o over the years into what we can see now, which is a kind of fantasy variation. Yeah. And it's very important, the cholita is, is the part of the dance, the, sens the, the brings the sensuality, the sensuality and the sexy things. 
and she need dancing so sexy and the movement so elegant. And the guys did be the opposite, strong and the steps as well. They bring stronger and powerful. For the reason the Cholitas look more sexy in the dance and the guys more strong. This is the characteristic for this uh, dance. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've got, a, I've got a question, Joshua. Is any is yeah. there any particular time that these dances are performed in Bolivia? Oh, oh yes, yes, of, of course. Uh, tell, have, tell us a little bit about it. I, yeah, yeah, I tell you. Um, in Bolivia, we have one time, uh, many times. I think uh, we are the country can more celebrate every time because we have a lot of parties all the year. We were, we have, I think, uh, more bad holidays, can more uh, more days <laughs> for work. Yeah, believe me. So uh, we celebrate the more biggest celebration. Is of course the Carnaval of Oruro, que is uh, world heritage of uh, humanity, mm -hmm. and since uh, 2001, you imagine, and and we have a lot of dance in this carnival. So uh, in this time, normally it's in February, we have the more bigger uh, concentration of the dancing all around the world coming to Oruro and dancing for the Virgin del Socavón, which is the, the reason where we're dancing for uh, religious things. So uh, this is the time where we move more this dance. So uh, for, for go to the carnival um, in whole cities of Bolivia, uh, prepared since uh, one year ago. So the, since the carnival finished, they started to prepare. It. Imagine for the costumes, for the dancing, the steps, um, everything, everything they prepare it just for go to the, not just because they go to the biggest carnival in the world, uh, Oruro. And in that way, uh, that well, you were telling us that, well, of course, it, uh, this carnival that is Oruro, and well, we're going to talk about this one later, but it's like, uh, about the carnival, and I know, guys, that I think so. We have a, a problem with the connection because we cannot see them and, and see, see see both of you. And, and and actually, I think so that well, you were frozen before. However, the audio is it, it's really good, but well, it's it's a shame that well, it's like we cannot we cannot see you guys. But well, it's like I I just want to ask you that well, when we're talking about uh, all these customs, and here we have a question. It's like uh, because they were saying that well. They have like an animal, but it's not an animal, the one that you have there, right? Uh, in the in the in the outfit. Yeah, now ah, really. can, can you see me now? Yeah, yeah. we better. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry about that. This is the, the costume look. And this is uh it's, this costume from the Centralista San Miguel is very important. You know, uh, we have every year we renew the costume for go to the Oruro Carnaval. So every year we need making new. This is the costume that 2020, because 2021, we don't have a carnival in Bolivia. So for the pandemic. Um, so this is the 2020. And the name is Amaru. Amaru in Quechua and Aymara means the, the god of the, of the renewed of the, the film. No? Yeah, uh, I'll explain better uh, for me this. But this representation something like the mythology from the, my country. So this is like, uh, okay. So within the um, the folklore around around the, the carnivals in Bolivia, um, there's a, a certain mythology. So there are particular um, uh, deities and um, and gods that are represented within the mythology. And so one of them is Amaru, who is a serpent, um, serpent who lives in the water with two heads, and the and um, what's really special about Centralista San Miguel is like all of the big dance fraternities, they change the, or bring out a new costume every year for carnival. But in San Miguel, every costume has not just a design, but a name and a meaning. So the, the name for this costume is Amaru, which is the name of the, of the um, deity. And the meaning is renovation de fe or renewal of fe, because um, as we were saying, the, the carnival is dedicated to the Virgin of Socavón. So dancing in the carnival is an act of renewing the faith. So each year there's a new costume and in San Miguel, each costume has a name and a meaning behind it. Um, and that's how we uh, arrive at the, choosing the colors and the motives and the design. I'm sorry guys, I'm going to ask, uh, it's going to be a, yeah. a, a weird question, but it's like, and, and, and this is more like regarding how do we have to support 
all the Latinos that they are performing mm -hmm. here in the UK, how much it cost one of that kind of outfits to be produced? Sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, co the costumes coming from Bolivia. This is making in Bolivia because it's so difficult making and we have the tradition for oh, 100 years, I think so, the, the, the tailors making this in Bolivia, the artisans. So uh, the cost that this costume, because it's the more expensive costume in the caporal dance, we have a lot of groups in Bolivia, like you, I think you listen San Simon, Sambos, mm -hmm. they are very famous as well, but Centralista says it's the more older uh, uh, group of dance for the Carnaval de Oruro. So this is the more expensive group because we chose the best quality. And like you see, it's very details, everything. And so this is new, it's around 320 pounds each. And yeah, and bring here is a little bit the whole price more. So you can have this in London for 500 pounds each. Mm. And yes, yeah, it's a little bit expensive and, dancing here in London. No. <laughs> and that is, that, is, that is why I was just That's like right. asking because I think mm -hmm. so that they are like a lot of events that sometimes people, they believe that you're doing this. Oh, it's nice. But they, some people, they don't realize how much effort this mm -hmm. means. And not only about all the rehearsals that you're doing, learning new steps, uh, putting all the choreography, setting up the choreography, etc. It's like also the price of all these costumes that they are like very expensive. And also that's the reason why we're asking that people support all these events. And when they are like, honestly, sometimes they are like events that you have to pay 15 pounds or 10 pounds or 20. Well, believe us that it's, it's worthy because well, you will see this kind of, 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 of outfits, of course, this kind of dances, but also it's a lot of effort that these guys, they are doing. Yeah. And, I'm sorry, Whitney. No, no, it's fine. I just wanted to clarify my reaction. I mean, that makes a ton of sense because if you look at those costumes and I'm just seeing what you're showing me in the picture. So I'm sure up close and personal, it's even better, but they're so intricate and like how long that must have taken and all the beads and whatnot, mm -hmm. like they're beautiful. So I, I absolutely I can understand why it would cost that much. I would even think maybe even more. So yeah, just to let you guys know, I think they're really, really wonderful and beautiful. And I, I believe it. So, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely, and <laughs> yeah, the other the other costume that you see in the screen, this is the mm -hmm. 2019 that we use it in the Carnaval Oruro, and mm -hmm. this is the winner, the best costume in Bolivia from Caporales. This, we have the best, the best, we date selection, the choice, the best uh, costume in the Caporales dance, and Centralist San Miguel always win because we have a history in every costume, and this other is Pasión Inefable, is the name like representation, the passion that we have for the dance. This this costume, yeah, the passion that we have and the lion representation. This in the chest and this 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 costume is coming here and they thinking that we making like the brands Versace. They always the, the guys in the street telling us this is from Versace. This is from Versace. I say no, it's made in Bolivia. <laughs> <laughs> And, yeah. and, and actually, it's like, well, it's like, I, I don't know, it's like, if you are saying that this is every year, question here, who, who designed this? It's a good question. Uh, we have in the, in the fraternity, uh, the wife to the, to the leader, to the manager general, she, I, I think she's in the, 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 the public now from Bolivia. Hello, Lily, how are you? Nice to meet you. <laughs> One brings for you. And she designed her, she designed her. She's not a uh, designer. Uh, like well, me, she is. Believe me, that well, she is. Is. That is like she Yeah, is. but she, she, she designed her. She always have a nice period in the mind. Yeah, I say, I say, why are you not working with like branch, bigger branch? I say in London, why are you not stay in this? And she know, I just I stay in La Paz. I just, uh, she thinking in something, she come in the area and she put in the costume and she making beautiful costumes. I can't I can show you the old old costumes they are past years, but they are more beautiful. Every year is more beautiful, it's more beautiful. And not only the caporal, and you can see the more in Nada is more beautiful, and this is so expensive. Come here, one costume from Morenada is two thousand pounds each one. You imagine the Morenada. Because that one is the one that is like the devil, no? Exactly. Like it's like exactly. the, the complete the biggest, mask and everything. The biggest, the yes, biggest. 
Yeah, yeah that I think so. also it's like uh, something that I exactly. have. I had the opportunity. They, they, they are more expensive. So exactly. Yeah, I, I have the opportunity to see them uh, on New Year's uh, yeah. parade. parade. Which, mm -hmm. which it was two years ago. It was amazing. Well, before the pandemic, and I think the public it was just just enjoy the Latin American community. And but your the group of Bolivia, it was a stunning. It was amazing. Not even the dances. It was around more than two hours dancing, which is incredible. And with those uh, incredible uh, yeah, thank costumes. you so much for thing. Uh, and, and also it's like, it's, I think it's the complete environment because it's also the music that, well, you have a, a great music. And also as you were saying that, well, you were talking about the hablada and that means like part of the devil, right? Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about that one, please? What is, why the devil, what, what is this about? Yeah, yeah, thank you so much for telling that. The, the Carnaval of Oruro, uh, the, the principal dance, the, the dance like the fly dance from my country, the principal dance is the Diablada, the demon dance, the representation, the, this kind of the union, the, the old uh, traditions that we have uh, 2,000 years, uh, 1,000 years ago, where the people adorate the natural gods, you know, the sun, the hair, and they thinking that the demons is in the hair, in the hair, also inside the hair. So, they were the Spanish coming with the religion Catholic, they mixed this tradition and the tradition coming from the demons and they take the, the virgin, uh, the virgin, you know, in, the, in Catholic religion and mix these traditions. And it's so beautiful this dance because it's 100% Bolivian. This is whole world now, you know, and yeah, we have this tradition and the Diablada is the demon dance. In the front go one angel, imagine uh, driver, the demons group, and they go and, and they just come in from the carnival in Bolivia. So later they come back to the cavernas, to the, to the, to the demon's house, you know? It's amazing this history. I wanna, I wanna introduce you. We have in London two groups, the demon dance, and they are dancing as well. They are making presentations. Um, yeah, it's like the best dance from Bolivia. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm I, mm -hmm. I, I pretty sure, sorry, Roger, go, go. Sorry, I I just <laughs> miss now. Uh, <laughs> Alex, do you want to say something? Alex? Yeah, ju just to, just to add to that. Um, for me, it's obviously not a non Latin American. Um, I was bowled over by the the richness of culture and folklore that that, that you can find in Bolivia. Uh, it's a huge number of dances. Um, so, for example, in in the Carnival of, of Oruro. There's something like 18 different dances, 14,000 dances come, plus all the band members, every group enters with its own live band. There's something like half a million visitors come to watch. And the Diablada, uh, which you sing the pictures of right now, is the most emblematic dance of the carnival. It has a huge long history. It represents a lot of um, very important um, uh, aspects of, of Bolivian culture. And really, it's uh, if you have the chance to see it, uh, it's ab absolutely recommended to everyone. It's, it will blow you away, the Diablada. Yeah, yeah I actually, it's like uh, I had once the opportunity to go to one event. Actually, I present that event that it was uh, La Virgen de Ucurpiña. Uh, that is like a uh -huh. big celebration that actually I think so that maybe in another show, maybe you can come and tell us more about this uh, this. Virgin. And also that is like a massive event that you have here in London, uh, where all these groups, they present oh, yeah. and, and, and we have, it's like 12 yeah. hours of dancing yeah. and, and uh, it's a 12 hours party, like actually it's like just like a really fun, but uh, so hopefully in the next time we can talk about the Bir La Virgen de Curpina. Yeah. Absolutely. In um, Bolivia, we have, like I say, many times, many many, many events all the year, folklore events. So, but the principal is the carnival, of course, but uh, like you say, the Virgin celebration for the Virgin de Cupina, we have in August, they celebrate, of course, to the Virgin. And yeah, they are from the central of Bolivia, Cochabamba. And here in London, we have a big community, the Cochabambinos, they coming from Cochabamba and they celebrate, yes, it's 
it's very big um, because this this virgin is as well, well very like Mila Grossa making something like uh, biggest uh, passion for she. So many many groups in London coming uh, coming from the party that they celebrate in August, always in August. And also as well we have the Virgin of from from Copacabana. Is well she we have a big community in London as well, and we celebrate in August the first week and the Virgin de Copina in the second week the August. So in August the community Bolivian is just parties, parties, parties. <laughs> Well, and obviously for our British audience we have today, tell us, uh, Joshua, you participate in one of the most watched uh, contests here in, in, in Britain, which is the uh, Britain Got Talent. How did it come about and how were you, how you were received? How the people receive you? Yeah, glad to, thank you for asking me about that. Uh, the, of course, this event that we participate, the British Got Talent, is the one to the most biggest uh, place that we go. We, yeah, we participate since we we came in from three years ago. We yeah, we create this branch in London. Uh, we always looking for uh, not only staying with the Bolivian community. No, we we try to making the the the, the group uh, learn, uh, stay. In the British community, more inclusive. For this reason, in the group dancing, all the countries, Indians, Paraguayans, Colombians, Peruvians, we have uh, Argentinians, we have British, we have Spanish, we have as well, we have Italians, but uh, they born in Italy, they are Italians, and they go to the carnival as well. So we are very open for the old communities. For this reason, I think the San Miguel is more open for everyone, and we are the, this, the reason because we have this to support. And yeah, of course, we apply, and we said we received the invitation for the ITV, and they say, uh, guys, you don't want to participate in this event. I said, of course, yes. How can you participate? I think they watch news in one event that we have, and they say, the costume is amazing. You need to participate in the British Got Talent. So we go to the interview, and yeah, like you say, imagine we bring two groups, one the child and one the adults, and then both groups, we qualify to the next uh, stage. And for the, uh, this is sad for, because for the pandemic, they postergate this year. This year, no high British Got Talent. So we are qualified for the next year. We go right to the second stage. And yeah, it's amazing feeling this uh, interesting for the British people. I think the British people is a little bit shy and they don't, they're scary. Uh, my partner always tell me this. I don't believe, but later, yes, they are really shiny. And they're scary to stay with the, with the they watching, but they want to stay, but they, they're scary asking, no? But yeah, in the group we have, yeah, two British, one Alec and other girl, but yeah, they enjoy it and they love this uh, dancing. So we have good, good advices, good reviews for the British community. And we want a more introduction for them. And they can join us because we are very friendly and welcome. Please come into this rehearsal and we open your armies for everyone. <laughs> really? Yeah, absolutely. So if I, I can learn it, then it can't, you know, can't be impossible. <laughs> well, in that way, once uh, this, British Got Talent, go back. You have to let us know when you're going to be there in order that, well, we can, well, of course, let it know to the audience to watch the show and, of course, to vote for you and to support uh, the Latino community there and also, well, to saw these extraordinary dances and the amazing outfits. Oh. Yeah. Speaking Thank you so much, Enrique, of course, yes. And I'm making the invitation for, for you, Enrique, we don't have a Mexicans in the group, so I think you look very <laughs> nice with this costume. Well, actually, I would love to try one of this. them. As, uh... Yeah, actually, I would love to try one of them. Yes, yeah. I know, and yeah, everyone. Yeah. Um, where where can we find like more information about you and the dances and everything that you promote? Yeah. Okay, so um, you can contact us and see more about um, what we what we're doing all the time. Uh, by Instagram, uh, uh, by searching at San Miguel London, one word. Uh, on Facebook, we have a page for the Caporales Centralist de San Miguel London. So that's the, the page for our particular chapter, our, our branch. 
and also on YouTube. Um, we put videos up under San Miguel TV Mundial. And um, if you're anyone interested in, um, you know, joining joining the group, learning the dance, or finding out about um, engaging us for a performance somewhere or, or participating in an event, um, you can contact us through those pages or by phone on 0797594 or six seven two nine, yeah. And we have rehearsals every weekend now, uh, presencial rehearsals in the park in Kennington Park, in the middle of the park next to the coffee shop. So it's a beautiful space, very big space, and we we have received childs, cholitas, guys. Everything is welcome. Every country, every sexuality, everyone is. Welcome. We are very open arms, and we are no hours. We are just the love for the dance and enjoy the friendly part of America uh, with one dance Bolivian. Why not? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So, guys, before you go, we said that we have five camps for people that they are located here in the yeah. UK and or in South America. So, ah, you have the cap? No, not that one. That is the hat. That is the official hat. So, yeah. Yeah. Not that one. No, that one. No, 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 no that no, one is going to be the cap, cap, not yep. the hat. Yeah. So, that one. So, well, we have five for the audience. So, well, it's going to be very simple, the questions. And there are going to be two questions. As always, we will ask you in the same comment, please put both answers. Don't put one answer and later on the other one. Enter and later on the other one. So put both of them and click enter in order that we can have it. The five participants as well, they have the right answer. They are going to be the winners. And please, Joshua, what are going to be the questions for the audience? Of course, yes. It's a very simple question. And some and sometimes to the, to the interview today, I say, who is the most famous carnival in Bolivia and one of the most famous carnival in the world? And the, this is the first question, OK? And the second OK, so hold on, hold on a sec. People, they can type, what is the most famous carnival in Bolivia? That Well, of course, it's one of the most famous in the world. What is the carnival from Bolivia? So type it. And I'm say the second question. <laughs> and the second question is going to be. Okay, so the second question is uh, which is the principal dance of that carnival and the Philippines? And it's 100% dance. It's the principal dance for this carnival. So if you say what is the principal, the top, the, the most. Uh, um, the yeah, the memorable. main one, the most popular that actually I remember that Joshua, he was talking about that one, that what we said about the costume also, just like a hint, that is a big one. It doesn't matter if you answer in English or in Spanish, I know, because maybe you yeah. don't know how to type it in Spanish, but well, it doesn't matter. So it's like, but remember, you have to put both answers together because I have seen people that they are typing like one answer and they on both answers together and the five people that they have the right answers, both of them, like for example, I think so. Okay, we're gonna wait just a little bit. Uh, um, yeah. Okay, but well, put them, put them together, please, people. It's like both of them is put one, comma, and the next one. So put both answers together because if you put one, you're only giving hints to other people and they know what is the answer. So I have seen some <laughs> answers here. It's like, okay, I have seen, here we have, and just wait, oh, gracia, gracia is saying that well, it's Oruro and Caporales. No, is that the right, the right answer? No. 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 Sorry, <laughs> don't say the answer yet. Don't say the answer yet. Uh, so, well, We're very flattered, like, but not quite right. <laughs> no. Yeah, so half, <laughs> yeah, half right. Caporales is... Uh, okay, we have here Angela or Angela Dominguez. We say Oruro and La Diablada. Yes. Is she correct? Woo! Yeah, you are yeah, correct. Yeah. So, <laughs> Angela, you are one of the winners later on. <laughs> we have Jose Miranda also, that well, uh, he is saying correctly Oruro y La Diablada. Uh, later on. Ah, oh, well, later on. <laughs> Well, she correct immediately, uh, Gracia, and she put Oruro and Diablada. So, gracias, yeah. 
Okay, well, that was good. Uh, Anas, he said, Carnaval of Oruro, Amaru Diablada. Yeah. Okay, okay well, yeah. Diablada, yeah. 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 Anas, yeah. And we have Viviana Sosa, who is in Oruro and Diablada. Okay, Yay! so well, here we have Yay! the five winners. And I'm going to ask to these five winners that they are Angela Dominguez, Jose Miranda, Gracia, Alexandra, Anas, and Viviana Sosa. If you can send us an, a message to the Latin America show, just a, a, a messenger, just messenger, send us a message with your contact details in order that we can pass to Joshua uh, and also to Elec. Elec, yeah, uh, in order that well they can save you these uh, authentic <laughs> cups from Centralista San Miguel. Guys, it has been a pleasure. Of course, it's a very short time. Uh, we, I think so, I'm pretty sure that you are going to come soon. And of course, let us know when you're going to present later. Yeah, let us know in advance so we can invite the audience. And of course, let us know when you go back to British Got Talent to support you and of course to give you the best really. vibes of course enrique of course we need a whole uh, of course I, I say everything and thank you so much for the invitation i i i, I want to say you are very professional you are guys very professional you making this uh very easy for the for the for the guests and um and say this for my groups as well thank you so much for following news and I want to say for the Bolivians, for the South America, muchas gracias por sintonizarnos y mandar sus mensajes. Un saludo para todas las filiales allá en Sudamérica, en La Paz, la central, a Jaime Pacheco, allá en Chile, en Santiago, en Buenos Aires, en La Serena, Iquique, Arica, Lima, Quito, Buenos Aires, eh, Barcelona también, y nuestra nueva filial en Tokio, Japón. Un saludo para ellos y Thank you so much for your time and enjoying the Caporales Centralista San Miguel. You are welcome every time. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, welcome all, welcome all. As you know, we're a diverse, open, inclusive group. I'm very happy to share this wonderful culture with as many people as possible. And mm -hmm. um, viva Bolivia y la diablada! Yeah. <laughs> of course, viva Bolivia. And... Viva Bolivia. <laughs> Thank, Thank you very much, Joshua. <laughs> Thank you very much, Alec. Have a good evening. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> See you. You're welcome. Thank okay. you. Bye-bye. <laughs> so, thank you very much. And well, as you bye -bye. Said, well, they are like the... <laughs> the, outcome, the outfits, everything is just a... If you have the opportunity to go and to see them, please don't miss that opportunity to go to these shows. Uh, anyway, uh, when we will have more information and also when COVID will be released, we will let you know uh, where they are going to present. And, and of course, well, you, you will be very invited to go. And um, well, following this show, I think so. It's time to go to talk to, about some spirits. And this is a new brand. And we have a video of this brand. Yeah, of course, we have a video and then the introduction by uh, Whitney. gosh, this is making me thirsty already. All right, so <laughs> um, born in Kenta, Colombia mom, during her childhood, Ellie Webb would travel to Colombia for long summer holidays with her families. And since then has been inspired by the optimistic and colorful way of life over there in Colombia. And this is something that flows through Caleño at every level. And before starting this company, Ellie moved to Bristol, so not too far away from London, and gained experience working in the drinks industry, which, which she came to love, and then, of course, became keen to find her own footing in it. So, and we are very lucky to have Ellie with us tonight to explain more about this wonderful beverage as making all of our mouths water. So Ellie, thank you so much for joining us tonight and talking with us about what looks to be a very refreshing drink. 
Thank you. No, happy to be here and obviously introduce Caleno to the world and to the Colombians and the Latin American community out there. Um, hopefully it's like a new discovery tonight for some people. Definitely. Yeah, I hope so, too, because it was it was definitely new to I can't speak for my team, but definitely to me. And so let's talk Caleno. What does this name mean for those of us who, um, out there who might not be Spanish speakers? And yeah. how does it relate to the products that you're selling? So the name Caleno, so you are a Caleno if you are from the city of Cali in Colombia. Mm -hmm. And um, my family are Caleno, so from Cali. And I guess we'll talk about the story in a bit, but it's Colombia is kind of intrinsically linked with, with the brand and, and the product. And I took a lot of inspiration when I went back to Colombia a couple of years ago for a really big trip. And it just felt like, you know, Cali is uh, the capital of salsa. It's all about having fun, dancing, you know, so much positivity. And I wanted to bring, bring that name in, into the brand. And so, so I called it Caleño. Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> um, and also it's like, what, in, what inspired you to make yeah. this beverage? Um, and, and, and how long ago was this, like, what did you start like thinking about this? Yeah, so I, I used to work in the drinks industry. So in my early 20s, I, I landed a job working for a drinks company in the UK. They sold everything, wine, beer, spirits, pure, you know, alcohol, basically. And uh, I've been working for them for a couple of years. And you know what? It gets like around Christmas, loads of parties dancing and and lots of alcohol and so January came around this was in 2017 and I decided to do a little thing called dry January which few of you may know about it's this kind of challenge you set yourself I don't know if you if any of you guys have done it before but you basically take a month off alcohol and so I decided to to do this but I didn't want to be boring I didn't want to not go out and see my friends uh, here in Bristol so I would still go out and I remember one night going out to a bar to actually watch a Latin funk band so it was a really fun night it was full of dancing drinks the thing is though I went to I went to order a drink and I ordered uh, a diet coke and then I had another one and after that I just was, I don't want to drink I don't want to drink diet coke anymore so I went for a glass of water and of course my friends were drinking craft beer and gin and tonics and I was stuck there with a really boring drink and I think I just kept coming back to this experience and feeling like you know I want to drink something growing up I want something that feels like alcohol doesn't get me drunk so I can still take part in dry January I can still not drink but I you know I want to get up and dance and have fun and so that was that was the the kind of first time I really thought about this and I guess I started looking at, at the industry what else was out there there wasn't much you know you had some non-alcoholic beers Bex Blue, Heineken there wasn't much from a cocktail spirits perspective a lot of the, the mocktails were very sugary very sweet for me it was a bit sickly so I started thinking about whether I could create a spirit. So create it and distill it in the same way you would maybe an alcoholic spirit, but without the alcohol and just the flavor. Um, and then a couple of months later, I, I decided to travel back to Colombia. Now I hadn't been back since I was a kid. So my mum's from there and she would take me and my sisters and we, we'd go there for months and see family. I decided to go back to Colombia and, and just travel around the entire country because I'd only ever been to Cali and, and the coast. And so I went, flew to Bogota, the capital. Um, I went over to Medellin, to Cali, obviously, to the El Eje Cafetero, the coffee region, and then up to Cartagena and Santa Marta. It was beautiful and loads of, of amazing kind of vibrant towns and cities. Like if you go to Guatape, um, it is literally a village, uh, I don't know if it's a village, a town um, in central Colombia, and it's just paved in colour. It's beautiful, as well as Cartagena. And, and for me, I just felt like this is what the, the alcohol-free sector felt like it was missing, just some fun, some energy, some vibrancy. And we know that, I know that Colombians have that. And so I wanted to just use this trip as a bit of inspiration to create, um, to create the products and, and the brand. So that's why I called it Caleño. And that's why I, um, it's where I get a lot of my inspirations for the, the culture of the brand and the ingredients too. Ellie, 
I'm really, really intrigued because obviously everyone here is, I think the question is, tell us about the process. What, uh, what are the ingredients uh, this drink made? Because it's not alcoholic and it, it could be attractive for many people. Yeah. Yeah. So we use very similar ingredients to um, botanical ingredients that you might find in gin, rum, tequila, different spirits. So we buy very similar ingredients. We source them from all over South America. We, um, we get a lot of ingredients from there, Central America, Europe. We bring them in the UK, into the UK and we distill them. So we use a, a steam distillation process. All the botanicals go into the still. Uh, some of them are macerated beforehand. So we mix with a tiny, small amount of alcohol, but not so much that by the end of the process, it's still present. And then we distill for um, two days. And it's a very delicate, slow process because we're trying to extract all of the flavor from, from the botanicals. But actually at the end of it, we're left with a very floral uh, botanical drink that actually is quite concentrated so that when you mix it with something like a, a tonic or in a soda water or with a cocktail, it's giving you that base spirit, um, but just without, without the alcohol. So you're not ending up with like a 40% alcoholic beverage. So it's great. You know, if you don't, it's not just for people that don't drink. A lot of people uh, buy Caleno who do drink alcohol and just don't want to drink maybe midweek, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, they still want to have a drink at the end of the day, um, but still want to make that, make that drink that kind of signals, you know, six o'clock when you finish work and you're going to sit down and have some food. Or if you're going to drive. Huh? You've got to drive. No? Yeah. Pregnant. Yeah. You're running a marathon. Loads of reasons why people decide to, to cut down um, alcohol. And I see, like, in the pictures, you're talking about the process that there are only a couple flavors, but um, yeah. can you talk about, like, some of the ingredients? What are those flavors? And are there some future flavors that you plan on developing? Yeah. So, um, First of all, so our first flavor um, that I launched was Caleno, Light and Zesty. So this is our, our light spirit. So this is a distilled uh, kind of light and zesty blend of tropical citrus and spice botanicals. And it actually features our most iconic ingredient, which is an ink berry, uh, or Colombians will know them as Uchuas. Um, and so this contains, so in the distillation, we use the chubas, uh, pineapple, papaya, coriander seeds, um, and juniper berries, as well as green cardamom and uh, lemon peel for that kind of citrus note. So we, we distill using that for, for light and zesty and it, and it goes perfectly with tonic. So, you know, if you're used to drinking maybe gin and tonics, alcoholic gin and tonics, this is a really nice replacement for that. Uh, that's product number one and then product number two which we launched uh, back in November is dark and spicy so this is clearly as you can see a much darker spirit um, and this is again a distilled kind of darker golden and spicy blend with darker pineapple tropical notes um, so it's quite warming. Um, we use pineapple in the distillation, uh, coconut, toasted coconut, ginger, black cardamom, cola nut, and you also get some hints of fresh lime. This one, I'd say you could use it as a, potentially a rum replacement, and it goes really nicely with soda water and fresh lime. So you can make a maybe a, like an alternative to mojito, really nice with ginger ale as well and cola. That's what I was thinking when I was looking at it. So, um, and any idea, I know that's a really recent one, yeah. but are there any like thoughts about possible future flavors? <laughs> we actually have just launched literally uh, this weekend, uh, our cans. So these are basically light and zesty with tonic. So it comes in a ready to drink can. So these are, people are really enjoying these at the moment for picnics when you're out and about, you know, if you can't get a booking at the pub or a restaurant. You just go to the park, meet your friends and, and yeah, you'd have got to drive home, whatever you've got, you've got those. So. Or at lunch uh, night, at lunch time, <laughs> you can take one. This yeah. is, this is a launch week. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exclusive. <laughs> Um, yeah, so th those are all the products at the moment. So we don't have loads, like it's more of a, you know, it's definitely quality over quantity. Um, 
we you know we really work on these but you can make loads of incredible cocktails we've got loads on our website kalenyordrinks.com and so you can have fun with it and just treat it in the same way you would alcohol they taste just as good and in that way it's like sorry Whitney no I was just saying wonderful sold I'm heading to the store and getting <laughs> after <laughs> <laughs> and in that way it's like what was it like to be a Latin businesswoman in the UK how were you received by your competitors yeah so I mean when I first started there were there were hardly any non-alcoholic drinks brands in the market and this is this is you know it's not just me saying it but it's the most exciting segment of the drinks industry at the moment it's the most it's the fastest growing segment of the drinks industry like health and wellness is huge in the UK um, and so it's growing, you know, triple digits at the moment. And so when I started, it was pretty uh, low awareness. And now there's lots of attention on the category. Um, but I think from my perspective, being, you know, half Colombian and bringing that kind of Latin inspiration, I think Caleno has a very different perspective into the, in the market uh, to other brands. You know, um, my feeling coming in was that the category felt a little bit serious, a little bit um sensible and I just wanted to liven it up a bit so I think yeah I think me being female founder a lot of the um, the audience and the kind of consumers of this category are mostly female so I think having that perspective as a female founder is quite interesting and, and being able to relate to to the audience as well so I think there's lots of lots of benefits to that yeah and actually I think so with all this culture about uh well, as you were saying, healthy culture, etc. I think yeah. it's a really good opportunity for a lot of people that, well, it's like, a, you can drink it uh, even if you are going to go to the to the gym or you are doing exercises, yeah. Yeah, and if you're, you know, if you're out at a pub or bar and, you know, you want your friends to think you're drinking, but, you know, <laughs> you don't want to let them Yeah, know. exactly. You don't feel like an outsider, as you were saying, you were drinking just Diet Coke. No, I just said, well, exactly. I'm drinking a spirit, actually. Yeah. You know what it's like? As soon as you say, you say to someone, oh, I'm not drinking. They're like, why? Why are you not drinking? Have a drink. And then you get kind of hassled. And I think, you know, if you've got a drink in your hand and you're like, oh, it's quite nice. And no one, no one questions you. So <laughs> and actually it tastes like uh, or similar, as you were saying, it could be like a, instead of gin, that it could be this light and zesty uh, or the dark and spicy that could be the rum one. So we have these kind of two products that, well, it's like, yeah, why not to try it? And I think so it's like, it's a really good option. Definitely. Yeah, I've yeah I've had a lot of friends who um, who have friends that don't know about the product, and they've then got them to try it and said, oh, what do you think about this gin? And then and they've tried then an alcoholic one, and they've actually preferred Caleno and not realized that it's uh, non-alcoholic. So you can have fun. <laughs> you can make yeah, jokes with that one actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people people are saying in the comments, cocktails all day long. Yeah, I like exactly, that. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And <laughs> Ellie, obviously, uh, this is an amazing uh, product. And I think uh, the value is amazing. But where uh, our audience, everyone can find these delicious beverages? Yeah, so um, the main place to go for like, any information about our product and the story and cocktails would be our website. We've got everything on there, kalenyodrinks.com. Um, you can also find us on Instagram, Kalenyo Drinks and Facebook, obviously. Um, we also are in Sainsbury's. So you can find our products in um, most almost all of the same brews around the UK. So you just have to go to the beers, wines and spirits section. There's a whole section dedicated to non-alcoholic drinks, non-alcoholic beers, non-alcoholic wines and non-alcoholic spirits. There's a whole category. Um, and also if you want, you want something really speedily, then Amazon is always great. You can kind of get it next day. So th those, are, those are the main places you can, you can get hold of your colonial. Well, let me uh, congratulate you because step in or have a step inside an, an important chain like Sainsbury's here in Britain is is amazing. It's like a you are in with the big with the big boys. So congratulations! <laughs> thank you, thank you. Now, well, it's just good to, for people to be able to find these products now because you know when I four years ago when I first had this idea, I just couldn't find these kind of products, and now it's great to see 
our, my product and other people's popping up in bars and restaurants and supermarkets. It's great. Now I have a question um, about the drink and these cocktails. I believe you wanted to show us one or two. Yeah, I'm going to show you actually how to make a, a tropicali cocktail. So um, I heard you talking about, I think, what, did you mention pineapple juice or someone me mentioned pineapple yeah, juice? Yeah, I did because your, your product inspired my segment. Yes, exactly. So <laughs> I've got everything here. I'm going to gonna try and show you guys. So and you can make, you know, you guys can make this along at home if you have any caleno, if anyone's been super prepared, or if you want to make these afterwards, I think we're going to run a little competition mm -hmm. um, to win a cocktail bundle. So that means both products plus some cocktail accessories and some mixers. So if you do want to make this at home, then take a photo when you do and uh, send it. Well, tag Caleno drinks um, and then maybe put hashtag the Latin American show and then we'll pick we'll pick our favorite. So I'm going to make the Tropicali. Um, make sure you've got a glass filled with ice. Then I'm going to get, I'm actually going to be using dark and spicy. And you can, you can measure exact, but I'm going to roughly put in like a double, a double measure. So go. Next, I'm going to add some lime. So you just need the juice of half a lime, basically. So see that there. So these are stuff you probably, I mean, this cocktail is quite easy because most of the stuff you probably have at home. Then I'm going to use just to give it some sweetness because with a cocktail, you normally want to have your base, then a bit of citrus. So from the lime, a sweetness from something. So I'm going to use agave syrup, but if you've got honey, that works just as well. Similar sort of product. Um, so I'm just going to add a squeeze of that, just a, just a small squeeze. And then finally to finish it off, um, I've actually got some pineapple juice. Now, if you've got tropical juice at home, that works equally well. So whatever you've got in the cupboard, I'm just gonna pop that up. And then I'm using a cocktail spoon, but any spoon will do just a little bit longer. Give it a quick stir. Then I've just got from the garden, a little bit of mint, which is super easy to grow. In fact, sometimes it grows too well. And this is a great garnish um, to have in there. So there you go. That is a Tropicali cocktail. Cheers. Oh, salud. Yeah. <laughs> salud. So I know, like salud with, with water. <laughs> so I guess my follow-up question is, when will we be receiving this cocktail? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you guys need to up your cocktail game. <laughs> I know, absolutely. But actually, I think it's a very good option for, for this summer. Yeah, because it looks like very refreshing and everything. So I think it's like good, like, well, with this sun that we have, uh, here in London, at least, like we don't have a lot of sun, but well, now we have sun, so it's like a good opportunity to, to try it and also just to enjoy it, like being in the garden or just like as you were saying after work, it's a good time. Like, well, maybe you want to have a drink with a with a flavor and it, and non-alcoholic. Yeah, it's a great lunchtime drink, and actually, you can make like a cocktail picture if you wanted to. So you've got some friends over now that we can have you know meet people in our gardens. Um, it's quite good. Hold on a second. I'm going to participate now. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's quite, it's quite good if you just want drinks at lunchtime or you don't want to drink, drink too much and when it's hot, you know, and then you can get a bit dehydrated. So it's good to like sometimes mix them in. But yeah, you're right. It's super refreshing. Well, it sounds like, like really good. And I have one question that's a little bit unrelated, but we like to ask all of our guests what is one thing you miss about Colombia? What do I miss? I mean, the weather, <laughs> the <laughs> obvious one. Um, oh, I miss my family, my, my abuelita is over there and my cousins and, and yeah, they were, they're kind of growing up so far. So, you know, with this pandemic and everything, I haven't been, been able to get back over and see them. So I'm excited to see um, my family my family over there and and yeah just I just love the atmosphere um in Cali is great yeah 
Yeah. I'm yeah, I believe it. And it's tough during this pandemic. I think family definitely is the first thing that comes to all of our minds. Yeah. yeah. And actually, well, we have like two ways that people, well, if we <laughs> want to say two different prices for the audience, two different bundles. One is going to be tonight, and the other one is going to be in two weeks, right? Two uh, weeks. Yeah, we're going to give everyone two weeks, I think. And, you know, this is because I really want to see people try and make some some cocktails and some alcohol-free cocktails. I think, come on, guys, let's let's get creative. Best picture wins. So tell us, how is going to be this, uh, the, the one that is going to be in two weeks, and just that the audience, they know that, well, of course, you can win one of these bundles that we have presented before, uh, yeah. courtesy of Caleño, but how they can participate, Eli. Yeah, so for the competition in, I know obviously you can win one tonight, the competition in two weeks, um, you just need to create your own alcohol-free cocktail using Caleño and then tag Caleño drinks in your picture, either on Instagram or Facebook, and then just add the hashtag, the Latin American show. And then we'll see it and we'll be able to, we'll pick the best winner. And actually also the hashtag Caleño, right? Yeah, yeah. Hashtag Colonial or just tag us. As long as you tag us in the picture, we'll, we'll see it. Okay, yeah. perfect. So tag Caleño. Okay. And well, for people that they have their keyboard in English, it's very easy because the N, if you are doing on your mobile phone, just press, man, keep press the N so and it's going to one. appear the Ñ. That well, actually, we didn't, we didn't, we haven't talked about the Ñ, or have we, Whitney? Well, I did like very, very, very long time ago. Um, yeah. But yeah, the Enya, it's like a letter it makes. And so instead of like an N, like na, like just saying like a regular N, the Enya makes a Nya sound. Yo, we yeah. talked about that the first couple shows a thousand years ago um, when I talked about the alphabet. <laughs> some of the sounds. But also, <laughs> can you put the brand again, Roger, so that they know what is the Enya, that well, they can read it, they can see it in Caleño. So if you can put, uh, I think so you have the, only the name of the brand. And well, of course, here we have the sure. dark and spicy and the light and tasty, tasty. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, that one. That is the ñ. So yeah, of course, instead of an N, we use an ñ in Spanish. So well, you can tag Caleño and also put the hashtag of the Latin America show. And you know that in two weeks, we will know who is the winner. Ellie will let us know who is the winner. So well, you have two weeks to buy in Sainsbury, buy in Amazon. Uh, and well, of course, you can just buy it, prepare a drink at your place, take a picture, and just like upload on Facebook and tag Caleño and hashtag the Latin America show. And in two weeks, we will let you know who is the winner of this uh, bundle courtesy of Caleño. Well, that sounds good. Yeah. And well, for tonight, uh, sorry, Roger. No, 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 it's just like, I just see that it is with this solicito, with this little, this little shiny things is on, on the bride of the London. Yeah, we can enjoy something like that, and and we can find it now in the Sainsbury. So it's very easy. Let's try. Can, it's can I participate? <laughs> it's on offer at the moment as well in Sainsbury, so you can get a good discount. Good discount on it at the moment. Oh, can well, I participate? So... <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. You can, maybe you can not win, but you can participate. Oh. Why not? Yeah, yeah, of course. But anyway, so while well, the show, well, tonight we're gonna give a bundle for the audience and it's gonna be very simple. Remember, just put Whitney, explain as a teacher, how they have to answer the three questions that we're going to ask. Enrique wants everyone to send every single answer in a totally different message because he no, loves- No, 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 I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I've trained them, Enrique, because of my classes. Come on now. Okay, answer, comma, answer, comma, answer. Exactly, so and in answer one them. comment, in one comment, terrific. Yes. You answer once. If you make a mistake and you see everyone else's answers, too late. Oh my new God, that That's was my new no. it's gonna be It's going to be too late now. Yeah. Okay, so well, it's regarding to the interview that we have today, it's going to be very simple. You know that they are very simple questions that I know that Whitney, she gets 
annoyed because of that. But I would like to ask you, Ellie, give me one letter between A to Z. Give me one letter. C. C, okay, perfect. So, well, letter C. So, people from the audience, is, are you ready to participate? Thank you, Liliana, for let us know that well is answer, comma, answer, comma, <laughs> and here we're gonna have how people they have to do it. So, well, it's gonna be very easy. Remember, put one question, sorry, one answer. Excellent, again, Roger, thank you, yeah. <laughs> Okay, the first one is like, we were talking about caleño and this uh, delicious drink and spirit, but where are caleños from? From which city they are from? Texting my name. <laughs> That's very easy. Okay, the second one. Oh, the second one is gonna be very, okay, yeah. The second one, tell me one of the two flavors that Caleño offers. Ooh. And here, I'm gonna make it easier, don't worry. If you don't know the complete name that well, I know, da -da 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 -da, da -da 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 -da, you can say it's like, instead of using this drink or this alcoholic, I can use this one or the other one, yeah? The similar flavors. That could be like a, yeah. You got it, Whitney? No, you don't know? I, oh, I know. Ah, well, I know that you know, I'm pretty sure, yeah. <laughs> Teacher and knows. the last one, and this one has to be correct, 100%. What is the task that you have to do when you participate in the picture, uh, in the picture uh, contest that we're gonna have with this brand? I know how people they start like in the in comments. So well, like now you can you can start putting your your answers. And I don't know, Royer, if we can go. And I think so. Let's give some time. So well, it's like uh, if you want. Well, thank you very much. First of all, uh, Ellie, for being tonight with us. Meanwhile, the audience they are answering. Thank you very much for being with us. Of course, in two weeks we will know who is the winner of the other bundle that we are going to have, uh, courtesy of Caleño. So thank you very much. Good luck, uh, and of course, well, well, hopefully you can come when we're uh, launching a new flavor or when you have any news for us that well people, they can buy it in other kind of stores. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me, guys. It's been nice to be on. Thank you. Thank I you. Am so, I am so jealous of Ellie. She's drinking it now. And she's now. <laughs> I'm yes. Next time I'll bring cocktails yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Enrique, so? Yeah, and I think so here we have like the first answer. Well, Francine, uh, Francine, she answered, uh, yeah, basically correct, but it was because <laughs> she was in Cali, Rome, and Caleño, yeah. But do you remember that? our friend uh, Ellie, she said letter C, and letter C would be the third one that is correct, yes. yeah? Mm -hmm. So, the second one that I have an answer here that is correct, I have Diana, ah, no, Diana is not correct. Sorry, Diana is not correct, because Diana is saying Cali, spicy, that, yeah, it could be, yeah, and the Latin America show, but that is the hashtag, and we said who they need to tag. And the hashtag is going to be the Latin America show. That's correct. And later on, we have Annalise that what she's saying, Cali, Jean, and hashtag Caleño. Well, Caleño, in other words. So I think so. Annalise is the winner. It's the third one. And, ah, but hold on. Is the third correct answer. So sorry, no, Annalise, you are not the one. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I think that we have here Anas that is saying Cali, like and says, and says tea. Yeah, it could be says tea. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And, but he's putting, uh, this is tricky. He's putting the Latin America show hashtag, but also he's putting at Caleño drink, Caleño drinks. Uh oh. Mm. No. What is the teacher? No, the teacher wrong. said no. 
No. Okay, Teacher. so the next one is. Send me hate comments. <laughs> Garin, that Garin is saying Cali, like Jean and Caleño. That's the correct answer. So, well, yeah. So what my teacher, what do you say? It is because that's the first drink that she described, the one that was tropical, that she said it gin replaced that one and that rum replaced the, the darker one. Okay, so congratulations to Gary. Eric, she has win a couple of things now, I think mm -hmm. so, here in the show. So, well, and actually, well, it was like the, the third one because, well, they told us letter C. So, well, thank you very much. So, uh, Gary, if you can send us your, I think we already have your details, but well, if you can send us your details just to, uh, just to send you that information. Sorry, Anna, I know that you're putting no. <laughs> you're putting no. no. So thank you also thank to you. Andrea uh, Summerskill for participating, Elizabeth uh, Vasquez. Also is here, Abhijit, so well, thank you, Francine. Yeah, Francine, uh, yeah, sorry, Francine, yeah. But anyway, so I think so it's time to go to, what do we have now? Is it Whitney or music? Whitney is- Whitney. Go to, okay, wonderful. Whitney. And later on, we're going, to, we're going to go to music, yeah. Yep. Yes, music, wonderful. So the, so the teacher says- What, yes. <laughs> All right, all right, behave. Don't be distracting either, my goodness. <laughs> you know, the worst is when the students are distracting and then the teacher laughs. There's kind of like no hope for the ones who should be well behaved in class, right? All right, so this is gonna be short and sweet, just like the beginning, um, but this is some slang from Bolivia. And like Enrique said, we have covered Bolivia. So most of the slang is actually gonna be new, but um, there's a little bit of review for those who didn't get to join us. Um, and that's going to be the case every week, I think, because there's only so much slang out there. So without further ado, here are a couple words from Bolivia. And not all of them are just Bolivian. We'll get to that in a second. So the first is, yeah. All right. So this is more like of a response to a joke. And it's quintessential in Bolivia's capital, La Paz. And it's like typically used to indicate that a joke has been made and like you should laugh, like now is a good time to, to laugh. So the person making the joke might initiate like a yeah at the end of their joke so that like people know like whether to laugh. Um, and it's polite to say like, yeah, regardless of if the joke was actually funny or not. It's like, it's like when you uh, have to tell so us when you are like, <laughs> making a joke and well we have to laugh that you're saying yeah it's like yeah okay guys you can laugh now right hey remember when i told you not to talk Sorry. <laughs> oh my gosh sometimes like we're the worst students all right so it's okay all right couple more um pues so this is part of like this isn't just unique to bolivia it's part of um, it's part of the lexicon of all Spanish speaking nations, but in Bolivia, they take it up a notch. So normally this word is used as a filler to be like, oh, well, or then like pues, but Bolivians use it to add a little emphasis too, in addition to that. So if they say like, si pues, it's like, yeah, for sure. No pues, like no way. Or ya pues, like, come on. Or arita pues, like do it now. So you would hear it in like those contexts for something that also can mean emphasis. So context is everything. Now the final word on this page, la yapa. Now you've seen this before a couple of times. First time is when we did slang from Bolivia. And also it's from other countries, one of which is Peru, which no surprise, it's, it's very close to Bolivia. And it's like, La yapa is something that's really, really good. It's like a little extra. So like, for example, if someone is making, if you order your caleño cocktail, right, at a bar, and there's like just a little bit left, like in, you know, the mixer, and instead of using it for someone else, they're just going to give you the rest of it, that's la yapa. So it's like a little bit extra, which is good. It's normally a very good thing. And then we have a couple more, and these are more expressions, the next few. Okay, so <laughs> 
Mass llegado hasta la copete. So this literally translates into like, you brought me to the, oh God, la copete. How do I explain this? Like, it's like a hairstyle. It's just like really wor- weird. In English, they call it a quiff. And I never even knew what that was. But it's like that really weird, like bangs that are curled up. And it really means like, like you've worn me out. I'm tired of it. Like estoy como, estoy muy harto. Okay, which would be like another way to say it. And maybe like estoy hasta la madre, which is a stronger word to say, way to say it in Mexico, in Mexican slang. So this is kind of like something that maybe you don't want to hear, <laughs> something that's a little negative. The the opposite of la yapa, in the sense of like, yeah, yeah, la yapa is like, oh, yay. And then if you hear that, it's like, oh, oops. Okay. So, por ejemplo, este es un ejemplo. Me has llegado hasta la copete con mis dos colegas que siempre quieren hablar durante mi clase de español. <laughs> Love the expressions. Okay. <laughs> All right, two more um, before I get cut off. All right, no más. So in most of the Spanish speaking world, no más is used like as it is in English to say like no more or like not anymore. But in the Andes and especially in Bolivia, it's to say like just or like to go ahead. Okay, like pase no más, like go ahead and pass or um, siéntate no más, like just take a seat. So it's important to understand the regional usage of it um, because otherwise if it's used, it could be considered rude and it's really not the intention behind it. It's just saying like, okay, you can do that now. Um, And then the last one, no ve, it literally translates. So ve comes from the verb ver, to see. So no ve literally is a formal way of asking the question like, don't you see? But in reality, it's a way of soliciting agreement from the listener. Like, Just like you would say in English, like, isn't it, or right, or, you know, where not really a response is required. It's kind of one of those rhetorical, like, you know, um, sentences as a filler. So that is another expression that is unique to um, Bolivia and the surrounding areas. That's it for tonight. Please, please, please go to my website, shameless plug, makingspanishsimple.com and subscribe. I've got some lots of material that I'm curating right now and um, we'll bring that content out through my email. So please subscribe and it is linked to all of my social media channels. Now you may speak. And uh, yes. yes. And, and <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Tenemos hasta la copete. <laughs> Siempre. Cada show. Cada <laughs> show. Cada <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, thank you very much, Whitney. And I think so. Uh, well, as we promised, because well, it's like we have a very <laughs> relaxed show with mm. music, dances, drinks, non alcoholic drinks. Uh, let's go to more music. And we have La Mamba, La Mamba Negra, that duel is like a uh, Royer, I think. So you have another song that the name. Which one is the name? El Sabor de la Guayaba, I think so. El Sabor de la Guayaba, which is a, a really nice expression. It could be used for a lot of things, but then mm-hmm. we let the teacher then explain that. But now let's go and enjoy this amazing music. Me jugo de guay. 
Really good, really good. Hey, uh, amazing. I, yeah, I think it was, this is very good. Uh, I think it's very good music. And uh, also, well, you can find them as La Mamba Negra. I think so Lily already put in the yep. comment section how, to, uh, how you can find them. So also they have many videos on YouTube. Uh, thank you again, Andrea, for providing us uh, this music. And also as Andrea did, you can do it and you can tell us who do you want to come to the show? It could be music, it could be artists, it could be singers or any person that has something related with Latin America that you are interested that well, they come here and they present it. That's, it could be products, it could be whatever you want. The Latin America show is to support everyone who wants to, to present something interesting to the audience. So please contact us in the Latin America show here on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And well, I think so. It I, I, I think so. We have some events for your the week. Yeah, we have some events. Is that's what was doing it? <laughs> well, okay, but I think so. We have some slide with events that well, uh, our friends. Yeah. Have right. Okay. Well, our friends of Latin Indian events from Avijit uh, is sharing this amazing 
concert. It's the birthday of one of the amazing artists, Carlos Paul from Ecuador. It's his 40, uh, well, his birthday. I don't want to say how many years. I think. Well, it's already there. Don't it's worry. Yeah, it's already there. <laughs> 45 okay, yeah. years, 41 well, gonna, yeah, years, yeah. 41 years old, is at 8 p.m. on Saturday, fair, 1st of May. It's going to be on Facebook Live and Instagram Live. You can find it at Carlos Paul Music and the same one in Facebook.com, Carlos Paul. So I recommend this event. It's an amazing artist. We have it here in the show, so you cannot miss out that. Yeah, it's a really nice music that also you can enjoy. It's, uh, and well, of course, if you can see, we have the previous shows. Or if not, you can just Google Carlos Paul and you can find, it, find him on YouTube and on Facebook if you want to watch more of his music. Mm -hmm. So I think it's time to go. I would like, before we go, sorry, I would like to thank to all the people that they are making possible the Latin America show. I want to say thank you to Liliana. Thank you for Justin. Thank you, uh, Ariadna Sobreira. Thank you, um, Evelyn. Uh, thank you, of course, Whitney, Roger, and all the people that they are supporting us, all the guests that we have had uh, well, during all this time. So, and, and, and of course, support us. And I, I would like to ask you to give us a like, share the videos, share the promos with more people, you know, that as well we can support all the entire economy in the UK and worldwide because people, they are like in different countries in Latin America, in Europe, here in the UK, and well, it's to support each other. So thank you guys. Before we go, yeah. before we go, before we go, let me share it so people can see it. The name, there's all the social media and is there is the event. So you can miss that, it's an amazing. Brilliant, and congratulations to the winners, uh, uh, Gary Dancy from uh, the bundle from Caleño, also Angela, Angela Dominguez, Jose Miranda, uh, Gracia Alexandra, Anas, and uh, Viviana Sosa, the winners of the uh, Centralista San Miguel Caps. So, well, it's like a thank you very much, all, and thank you everyone uh, who were participating here uh, on the show Gabriel Aguilera, Giaja, Liliana, uh, Francine, Annalise. Uh, of course, our guest, Eli, um, Abhijit, uh, also, well, Abhijit, thank you very much. It's not directly part of the Latin America show, but he's supporting us a lot. And also he's like sharing with us some of the artists also, and some people that they could be interesting uh, to bring to the show. Thank you, Anas, Carlitos Niño from Colombia, also uh, Joshua, uh, well, Joshua, that well, he was one of our guests. Diana Carolina, everyone, thank you very much for participating in the chat with all of us. And um, well, I think it's time to say bye-bye, uh, Roger Alarcón. Well, extraordinary program. Thank you very much tonight. Let's hope this week we this weekend we have a little bit of uh, sun. But see you next week. Thank you, Roger. On the other side, Whitney Lucharello. There is one name I would like to thank as well as all the names, Enrique. And it, believe it or not, is you, Enrique. Thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> not for like you talking and making faces during my classes, but <laughs> for um, all the work you put into the show. I mean, any sort of work all of us do, like Enrique does triple. So um, I just wanted to take a minute and recognize all of his efforts on this program, especially if we're gonna talk names of people who helped, a lot of the work falls on the shoulder. So thank you. Oh my gosh, this is me being that It happens so rarely, if you guys aren't used to a compliment. <laughs> um, last but not least, something a little less emotional. Um, the music that <laughs> you um, heard tonight, all the music on the show, I lit just updated our Spotify playlist. So it represents all the musicians that have been on that are on Spotify um, from June, well, we haven't had a lot of musicians until recently, but they're all there. So check out our Spotify. It's a Latin America show and there's only one on Spotify and that's us. So follow, follow us and listen to all of our music. Brilliant, thank you very much. And also, well, Abhijit is saying here also, and Kevin, yes, because well, Kevin. you know, Kevin also <laughs> is here like sometimes at eight o'clock today, just been very quiet. 
So that's good. He was not drinking water or eating or coming here just to tell me that well, it's time to go Kevin outside. Kevin deserves a monument because he's the <laughs> only one to... When he gets angry, <laughs> Kevin receives everything. <laughs> no, of course not. So, well, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, and of course, you know, uh, this is the Latin America show. This is every Tuesday, 8 p.m. London time. My name is Enrique Gelista, and it's a pleasure to be here. So see you next week. Thank you all.